During the 2008 housing crisis, I worked for a real estate consulting firm that was hit hard when home developers stopped their projects. But we survived by pivoting to Excel Consulting to help our clients with their financial models and data processes. And it was during this time that I realized just how important Excel is. It's used by hundreds of millions of people, and businesses are always looking for employees with solid Excel skills. So in this video, I share 15 essential features and techniques to help you become an Excel power user. And I'll highlight the most crucial ones at the end of the video. So let's get to it. All right, so we'll start with the very basics. And of course, every Excel user needs to know how to write formulas. Here, we'll just write a very simple formula using some multiplication. And we'll go ahead and copy this result down. Now, of course, we also need to know how to use functions. Here, I'm going to use alt equals, which is the shortcut for auto sum to create the sum function for me. And then other popular functions include average to calculate the average of a set of values, count to count the number of records. We have the max and min functions as well. And slightly more advanced functions like count if or sum if can help us analyze our data further. Here, I'm going to use the count if function to count the number of uh, values here that are greater than one. So we'll select this range, type a comma with in quotes here, I'm going to say greater than one in quotes, hit enter. And that lets me know that I have 16 transactions with a quantity greater than one. And of course, this only scratches the surface with Excel functions. So we've put together this free list of 50 Excel functions that every data analyst should know. I'll link it up in the description below. Data types are also a very important concept in Excel. Within a cell, we can store different data types like numbers, text, and logical or Boolean values. There are other data types as well, but these are the most important and most common. Now with these data types, we can also apply formatting. So it's really important to know number formats. Of course, we can just have a number like this, but we can change that number to a format to display it and make it easier to read. Of course, number formats can be found on the home tab here in the number format dropdown, and there are a lot of different options. You can also click more number formats or control one on the keyboard to open the format cells window. And here you can see a lot of different number formats and you can even customize and create your own. Excel tables are a fantastic feature of Excel for storing and organizing our data. They have the filters automatically turned on for sorting and filtering. They also automatically expand when you add new data to the bottom of the table. And on the table design tab here, you can change the styling. Of course, they come with these banded rows automatically, which you can turn on and off. We also have an option for a total row to automatically get a total. And you can insert slicers as well to quickly filter your reports. Now tables do come with some disadvantages and I actually don't recommend them in all scenarios. I have another video that explains this in more detail and I'll link that up in the description below. Conditional formatting allows us to analyze our data visually. Here I'm going to select the company column. On the home tab, I'm going to go conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and choose duplicate values. And this will instantly highlight all of the duplicate values in this column. And we can also use conditional formatting in more advanced scenarios for things like highlighting rows between two dates. Now there are hundreds of functions in Excel, but power users need to know XLOOKUP. In this scenario here, we have these names and we want to look up the names in this table over here and return the email addresses. So for this, we're just gonna type a simple X lookup. This will be our lookup value, type a comma. The lookup array is the column we're going to look into and the return array is the column that we want to return. Hit enter and X lookup will do all of that magic for us and return the matching results. Now, if we want to do a lookup and return multiple results, we can use the filter function. So here I'm going to start typing filter. Our array is going to be this entire table here. So we'll reference that. And then what we want to include is where this customer name column is equal to the customer name listed right here. Go ahead and hit enter. And that's going to return or filter down all of the rows from this table over here where the customer name equals save mark. And the results are returned to multiple cells, which is called a spill range. And this is a feature of dynamic array formulas. Now, if you want to prevent errors and make your spreadsheets easier to use, we can use data validation. For this cell here, I'm going to go to the data tab on the ribbon and choose data validation. And then I'm going to create a list, a drop down list in the cell. And for the source, I'm just going to reference the customer name column here. We'll go ahead and hit OK. 
And that creates this drop-down list, which makes it easy for me to just select one of these customers. And then of course, since this formula is dependent on this cell, it will automatically recalculate and show the correct results. And these lists prevent typos and make data entry easier. Next, we'll take a look at automating data cleanup. So we have all of these CSV files here that contain order data, and we need to combine them into one table. We're going to use Power Query for this. So we're gonna to go to the Data tab on the ribbon, Get Data from File from Folder, and then navigate to the folder that contains our CSV files, and Combine and Transform Data. Hit OK here. And that will open up the Power Query Editor window, which looks similar to Excel, but contains features that allow us to clean up our data. We can do things like deleting or removing columns. We can also split columns. I'll do that by a delimiter, which is a dash character, hit OK, and do several different types of data cleanup tasks. When we're done, hit Home, Close and Load, and that will create a new sheet in the workbook and output the table with the combined CSV files. And when we get new data next week, all we need to do is take that file and drop it into this folder here that the query is pointing to, go over to Excel, right-click anywhere on the table, and choose Refresh. Keyboard shortcut is Alt F5. That will rerun all the steps we just did, so we never need to do those steps again. And you can see that we now have the week five data right down here at the bottom of the table. So Power Query is a tool that will save you a ton of time, and I'll put links to additional resources in the description below. Now, if you really wanna take your data analysis skills to the next level, I highly recommend learning pivot tables. We're gonna jump back over to that order data that we just combined here. I'm gonna go up to the insert tab and choose pivot table. And I'm gonna put this on an existing worksheet here, right on this sheet. Let's put it in this cell and hit okay. That's going to create this pivot table that will allow us to create summary reports very quickly. So if I wanted to see my a report here of the color, I'm just gonna drag the color in the rows field and a sum of quantity for each color. I can drag and drop both of those fields here and I instantly get this report that sums up quantity by color. And pivot tables are highly flexible. So if I want to see my product IDs across the top, I can put those in the columns area to see all of the product IDs. So I now have sum of quantity by both product ID and color. And of course we can shift this around to get different views depending on what you or your boss want to see. And the great part is we don't need to write any formulas to quickly create these reports. And if we really wanna bring our data to life in Excel, we can use charts and specifically pivot charts, which are a feature of pivot tables. So I'm just gonna select any cell inside my pivot table here, go to the insert tab and click pivot chart. Here we can choose from several different chart types. Let's do the standard column chart and hit okay and that will insert the chart here, which again is based off the pivot table. Now, as the pivot table changes, so will the chart. And another nice feature is we can also use slicers. So here I'm gonna click insert slicer. We can choose from any of our fields or columns. I'm gonna choose product ID and hit okay. That will insert our slicer and the slicer is a filter. So if I just wanted to see the results for product 1001, I can click on that. That's gonna filter down the pivot chart and the pivot table for just that product. Now, pivot tables are the gateway for more advanced tools like Power Pivot and Power BI. In this example here, we have a table with budget data and then a table with order data, and we want to use a pivot table to compare both data sets and calculate a variance. For this, we can use Power Pivot. Power Pivot allows us to create relationships between these tables here, and then we can use measures, what are called DAX measures, to create calculations for both basic and advanced metrics. Again, I'll put links in the description where you can learn more about Power Pivot. An Excel Power User Checklist wouldn't be complete without mentioning Lambda and Let. We'll first take a look at Let. The new Let function allows us to make our formulas more efficient. So in this scenario here, we have this XLOOKUP formula that's actually doing XLOOKUP twice. It's looking up the product ID in this table over here and returning the weight. And if the weight is over 40, then it's gonna return the word bulk. So in order to do that, we have to use XLOOKUP twice, and that can be a little bit inefficient. Let allows us to assign variables to the results of a formula. So here we're only doing the XLOOKUP once. We're returning the result of that to this weight variable, 
And then we're using weight down here in this if statement to say if the weight is less than 40, we're gonna return the weight, which is that number. Otherwise, we'll return the word bulk. So in this case here, this improves efficiency of the formula by 42%. And it can also make the formula easier to read. And Lambda allows us to create our own custom functions. So here we have a calculation, which is the average top 25% excluding zeros. And this is a fairly complex formula that might be difficult to remember every time you need to calculate it. So Lambda is a function that allows us to specify parameters here or arguments, and then the calculation, and then we uh, set up a named range and we can specify or name it whatever we want. And this becomes our custom function. So now in a cell, when we use average.top, this is a function we can use. All we need to do is pass through the range here that we want to calculate and the percent in this case, and that will run the lambda and return the exact same results. And we can use this new function anywhere throughout this workbook and also import it into other workbooks. Excel contains other advanced automation tools with macros and VBA and Office scripts, which allow us to automate just about any task or process that you can think of. For example, I have this My Macros tab up here with a bunch of buttons that run macros. If I want to create a quick table of contents, I'll just click this button, and that's going to add a sheet to the front of the workbook with a table of contents of clickable links to each sheet in this workbook. And this is created with code, specifically VBA code. So I'm gonna hit Alt F11 to open the VB editor. And here is the code that runs when I click that button to create the table of contents. And I love macros in VBA because it opens up a whole world of possibilities for automating processes and making our work a lot more efficient. Again, I have links to additional resources that I'll put in the description below. And in this new era, Excel Power users will definitely benefit from using AI. Now, of course, Microsoft has Copilot built into Excel with a lot of nice features for anything from writing a simple formula to debugging complex Python code. And of course, there are a ton of other AI tools outside of Excel, including ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, and many others. Now, generative AI and these large language models can produce hallucinations and incorrect results. So I always encourage you to still learn these skills and use AI as an assistant to help greatly speed up your work. So I'm curious to know what other Excel features you would add to this list. Let us know in the comments. And the good news is you don't have to learn all of these at once. I recommend focusing on the features that will be the most important to you in your current role. If you need help figuring out which tools those are, check out my free Modern Excel Blueprint training where we dive deeper on this topic. I'll put a link to that in the description. And if you found this helpful, hit like and subscribe, and then check out this next video with even more time-saving tips. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.